welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be looking at adding a buzzer onto the Nighthawk Pro 280. Now we've already done a couple of other videos on this model. We looked at the ready to fly version that came straight out of the box and we flew that around and we've also added our own radio to it. So here we have my trusty Tyrannus connected to the device. In this video we're going to add ourselves a little buzzer so that at the flick of a switch on the radio the buzzer starts to make a noise and we can use it as two things, a lost model alarm, but we can also use it for a low battery alarm as well. However, using it as a low battery alarm does mean there has to be some additional cabling and there'll be another video on that, but for now, we'll just talk about how to install the buzzer and configure it so that when you flick a switch, it makes a noise and if it comes down in long grass, you've got a chance of finding the model. So let's clear the bench off and let's zoom in and I'll show you the bits and pieces that you need to make this work. Obviously we're going to need our Nighthawk Pro. Uh, the little adapter that we're going to plug it into is just here on the right hand side, uh, just down from the USB cable, but we'll take a closer look at that in a sec. You need to pull out the bag of extra cables that we had a look at in the very first video, and the one that you want is going to be the two pin cable, the one that's just got the two connectors on it. You need to find that, and you need to get yourself some piezoelectric buzzers. Now these piezoelectric buzzers uh, you can buy for a couple of quid from eBay if you just search for 5 volt piezoelectric buzzer uh, then you'll find them. They are great because they are very simple little devices and what you'll find is that they're clearly labeled, they have two connectors at the back, one is clearly labeled positive, the other one's negative and what we've got to do is to plug it in. The last thing we need then to make this work is we need a spare channel on our radio, one that we can flick. So at the moment we're using auxiliary one to control the uh, flight modes on the board itself. We saw how we did that in the second video in the series. We also need to make sure that we have another auxiliary two, hopefully that's moving around as we move a switch on the radio. If you haven't, then you'll need to set one up. But we can test whether or not we've got one that's going to work very quick. So the next thing we'll do then is let's just zoom in and I'll show you how to connect these pieces together. Here is a close up of the actual side of the craft. There's the USB cable. That's where we want to plug the cable into. It's actually called buzzer and it's clearly labeled positive is this side, negative is this side. So what we need to do is we need to plug our cable in that's come uh, as part of the kit. Any of the two pin cables will work. Make a note of which side which cable is plugged into the positive side of that connector. Get hold of your piezoelectric buzzer, spot which side is the positive and just pop the lead on. Similarly with the other side, just pop that one on there and you have the buzzer wired up. It's that easy to do. Now obviously what you can do is rather than use these connectors, you can remove um, the ends and, and do the soldering or crimping or whatever it is and uh, you're good to go. Now, word of warning, uh, these little labels that come on the pizza electric buzzer just to make sure you're clear on which side is positive and be really careful about connecting it because if you connect it the wrong way around uh, nothing will happen and potentially bad things might. So um, in, unless you remove this little sticker underneath it what you'll find is the pizza electric buzzer actually has a little hole in it. it kind of looks like that and you'll have seen them before. Unless that hole is uncovered it won't make a noise. Now the last thing I'll say on this is that you have to be really careful with these buzzers. When they are making a noise, they are making a lot of electromagnetic interference. So you want to mount the buzzer on the craft far away from the sensitive electronics and ideally as far away as you can from things like the aerials as well. So what I would recommend is I'm going to mount mine right at the front down here probably just underneath the chassis actually so it's slightly underneath and that way it's kind of out the way. So now we've talked about how we're going to connect this thing up and we've actually done it live on camera the next thing to do then is to connect the model up into base flight and to configure it so that when we flick a switch on the radio we get that beepy noise. So let's do that next. So we're back on our netbook and I've just started base flight. I've connected up the model via the USB cable and I've also installed the flight battery because we need our receiver set up so that we can see what the radio is doing. Now because of that of course you do need to make sure that your props are removed and that your radio is powered up as well uh, just for safety's sake. So let's connect to the model. 
Now the first time you actually power it up with the buzzer installed, the buzzer will make a huge noise and start going crazy. And that's absolutely normal. Let me show you why that is. By default, if we go into configuration, enable battery voltage monitoring is actually turned on. And what's happening as soon as you power it up, because that extra wiring isn't done to enable battery volt monitoring and you can actually see the voltage on the board itself that's what you, the noise is it's going nuts because the battery voltage is going so to stop it just uncheck enable battery voltage monitoring go down and click save and that should stop it beeping like crazy now the next thing we need to do then is just to see whether or not we actually have a channel that we can use to put the beeper onto so go into receiver and flick your switches and you want to be finding one ideally that's going to be moving when you flick a switch. And if you watch my auxiliary two, as I flick my switch on the radio, I see that move. That's brilliant, that's what you're looking for. So once you've spotted a spare channel that's not being used for anything else that you can move with the radio, then what you need to get, do is go into mode selection. And then here, there is a mode called beeper. Now as I move auxiliary two, let me just turn those two off and that way it won't keep sounding the beeper while we're doing the video, is as I move my little switch, there's my auxiliary two moving. Now what I need to do is tell it that anything apart from that first position, I want the beeper to be sounding. So if I just select those two and click save, then you can see the board knows that we have this mode will be selected at some point because it's red. As I move my switch into either the middle or high position on the radio, I'm getting my beeping and that's how you set it up it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy but again just make sure that two things are done first is when you first plug it in and you've wired it up the beeper will go like crazy don't panic about that that's a great test that the beeper's working but it's just because enable battery voltage monitoring is turned on unclick that hit save then jump into your receiver make sure that you can see some channel moving that you're not using for something else as soon as you spotted one Go into mode selection and then under whichever auxiliary you've got that you can see moving around, just set it up like here so that in a particular switch position, it'll activate the beeper. So hopefully that helps those of you that have been looking to do this. I think it's a very useful addition on this little model because if it comes down in bushes or in long grass at the edge of the field, then it can be a nightmare to find this thing. Your only other option is to try and run the motors, potentially pull grass into all the places you don't want to. Whereas with this, you can just flick the switch and go and follow the sound of the beep. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless 360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.